In this video, we will talk about the basic components of a cybersecurity program. In a previous video, we gave you an overview of the basic principles found in a cybersecurity plan. In this video, we will begin to talk about the actual specifics in what a security program should cover and the steps to create one. The idea of implementing a new cybersecurity program can be a daunting task. Where do I begin? How to start? What do I need to do? These are all important and difficult questions. Even when talking to experts, this could be a difficult task to explain. While there is no perfect answer and no perfect program, here is a list of things that all good cybersecurity programs address. Defining the roles and responsibility of the individuals involved with the program and what constitutes the security team. Performing a risk assessment and identifying vulnerabilities within the system. The implementation of various types of controls to mitigate risks and address vulnerabilities. Creating and disseminating policies and procedures so that staff knows what their responsibilities are. Ongoing education and awareness training. If staff doesn't see the project taking security seriously, they won't either. And some type of incident response program. Sooner or later, something will happen, and the project should have plans in place to deal with problems. At a minimum, this plan should address issues identified in the risk assessment. You are now familiar with what a basic security program covers, but the question still remains, how do you create one? There are a few steps that a project can undertake to successfully start a security program. These steps will help you address each of the areas we talked about on the previous slide. In this series of slides, we will talk about that first step, defining roles and responsibilities. When looking at a cybersecurity program, there are three important roles. Those are PIs and management, the security officer, and the users. It is the PI and manager's responsibility to establish risk management fundamentals within a project. This includes a framework for setting security objectives and aligning strategic risk management with project needs as well as any external statutory or regulatory compliance drivers. Without active sponsorship by the project leaders and a specific role dedicated to ensuring the fulfillment of security goals, Instituting security controls is next to impossible. A senior manager must have clear responsibility and authority to drive planning, enforce compliance with defined policies, and approve all exceptions to the security policy. Everyone in the organization has a role in maintaining security. Define and document the roles and responsibilities of at least the following. The governing body for the security policy, that is, an oversight board comprising representatives of stakeholder groups like engineering, legal, IT, etc. A designated information security manager who maintains the policy and provides guidance for implementation and enforcement. Project leaders who own the critical cyber assets and are responsible for implementing the security policies and procedures to protect those assets. Personnel with authorized access to critical assets who must review, provide feedback on, and comply with security policies. Management's role in a security program is essential. In a very real sense, security begins and ends with the PI. If the project leadership doesn't understand why security is important, no one else on the project will take security seriously. The PI is the one who is ultimately responsible for everything on the project. If data is lost or corrupted, if the system becomes unavailable, if there is a breach that causes a loss of privacy, the PI's reputation is the one that will be tarnished. Take the time to understand the vulnerabilities within the system. Understand what risk those present and what the trade-offs are when it comes to risk and usability. Make sure you set the example when it comes to security. Give the support to your security staff that they need to get things done. 
Every project needs a security officer. This is the person who is responsible for doing most of the work when it comes to the security program. As we have talked about in other videos, this might be a full-time person whose only responsibility is to lead security efforts, or, more likely, this is a person on your team who you have tasked with the extra responsibility of security. Regardless, the security officer is responsible for the program. They should lead and promote security efforts. They will be the ones who are promoting security efforts, doing the training, and keeping security at the forefront of everyone's mind. This person will also be tasked with developing security-related policies and procedures for the project. They will need the support of project leadership to accomplish and implement most of this work. Along with these tasks, the security officer will be responsible for monitoring systems and dealing with any incident that might arise. Most likely, the amount of work that a security officer is responsible for will be more than a single person can do. In order to help them, it would be a good idea to develop a team. Again, these might be people who have been brought on to specifically perform these tasks, but more likely, this team will be made up of members of the project who have other responsibilities. It would be a good idea to make use of individuals who have system and network administration experience. While this experience does not make them security experts, normally these individuals have many of the skills needed to perform many security tasks and often they are very familiar with many security topics and practice. Look outside the group too. This would be a good opportunity to make use of departmental and campus IT resources. The department might already have a security team and most likely the campus does. Forge relationships with these people and see how they can help you in your security efforts. They probably have policies, procedures, and tools already in place. They can also review your program and make suggestions. Take full advantage of them, and it's a very good idea for your security officer to make them their new best friends. In this video, we have looked at the roles and responsibilities of individuals when it comes to creating a cybersecurity team. In following videos, we will cover the other steps in creating a security program. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF. Grant number OCI 1234408.